Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel I do art stuff. So I am back for part two of the Turner Watercolour uh, palette setup and today we're going to do the swatching. I'm going to talk through the different colours, the pigment information, um, light fastness, transparency and all of that lovely stuff. Um, I've got my swatch card all done up. So what I did for this was I actually took the internal tray out from the palette and traced around it and then laid the cut it out, laid the paper over and then made little marks to mark out where each well is and then ruled it off, filled in the um, names for all the different paints and the pigment numbers. I really on my swatch cards only have the name and pigment information on there. I don't Put on information like last light fastness and um, transparency because doing the little swatches will show me for the transparency and the light fastness. Pretty much all of these are, li are light fast colors um, or have excellent light fastness. I think only one or two of them have like a medium light fastness, so I'm not too concerned about that. All of these are Turner watercolors, other than the five that are marked with an asterisk, which are other paints that I've used from my stash to fill out the palette. The paper that I'm doing this on is this Canson Moulin de Roy watercolour paper. It's 100% cotton, 300 pounds, through, sorry, 300 GSM, 140 pounds. There's 10 sheets in each pad. They're A4 size and it's 100% cotton, I think I said, acid free, all the good stuff. And it's cold press. Um, it's a really good affordable watercolour, cotton watercolour paper if you're looking for that. And it's one that I use for more like practice type stuff where um, I don't want to use my more expensive cotton paper um, but it's a very affordable price point for this one so I'll make sure I have it linked in the description box box for you and um, and yeah other than that I'm using these brushes today these are the Princeton snap brushes in a size 2 and a size 6 so I'll probably end up using the size 2 a little bit more just to have some pre more precision when I'm painting the swatches and we are going to start I'm not actually going to pre-wet the palette because I want to see how the colours reactivate. Also, as you can see, I mentioned in the palette pour video that Turner watercolours have a tendency to crack. And you can see a few of the colours here, the yellow, the cinnabar, the permanent scarlet, a little bit on the um, rose matter hue, uh, the evergreen burnt, burnt sienna and a little bit on the Mars black. Those ones have cracked a little bit oh and the Maya blue as well has cracked a little bit but the rest are okay and the ones that aren't from Turner are all fine as well so um, like I said before the cracking doesn't actually affect the quality or the usability of the paint so we're just going to go in with the transparent yellow first so what I do when I do my swatches is I have like a darker thicker consistent consistency at the beginning at the top of the swatch and then I'll water it down as I go to get a bit of a graded swatch. So the transparent yellow is a combination of PY150 and PY109. So PY150 is um, otherwise known as nickel as a yellow and it's a really lovely sort of earthy transparent yellow and has a really wide sort of value range on its own. Um, but in this case, it's mixed with PY109, which has given it overall a much cooler yellow tone, which is quite lovely. So hopefully you can see that. Then next up we have Quinacridone Gold. Now this one was a little bit, um, had a bit of binder separation issue when I was pouring it. So this well is a little bit more sticky. And this is a mixture of three pigments, so that PY150 nickel has a yellow again, which is a very common component for quinacridone gold. Um, PR209, which is quinacridone red, and then PV19. Now PV19 can be a range of colours, anywhere from like a quinacridone rose pinkish colour down to like a quin violet, which is more purple in tone so it's quite a range of colours that you can get from a PV19 pigment. Now quinacridone gold used to be a single pigment colour until the pigment was no longer being made and so it doesn't exist anymore and now all the brands offer a variety of hues. 
and I actually really love this pigment so I might do I have lots of different variations of this color as well in my collection of paints so I might do like a comparison video one day to see what they look like against each other then next up we have cinnabar now this one is an opaque color because it has a white pigment in it so this one is made up of PW6 which is titanium white PR101 which is an earth red again PR101 creates is a pigment that can create a range of colors and then it's also got PR254 which if I'm not mistaken is like a pyro red color but it's a red pigment oh there we got a little bit of a color bleed with that quinacridone gold that's all right and you can see even though it's an opaque color once it's washed down uh, diluted enough it's a really lovely sort of pinky peach color and it, it does become transparent once it's washed out a little bit more so next up we have permanent scarlet which in other brands is known as scarlet lake sometimes it's pr188 so it's a really lovely warm warm red Then we have our first non-Turner watercolour, and this is the Shinhan PWC, which is their professional watercolour line, um, in the permanent red, which in most other brands, this colour is known as quinacridone red, or um, quinacridone coral in Daniel Smith. And this is PR209, which is one of the pigments that's in the quinacridone gold colour by Turner. And this is lovely rich, it's a really interesting colour because it's a bit hard to pinpoint exactly whether it's warm or cool, but it's, in this case I think it's more cool leaning. It's got a bit more of a pinkish undertone to it than yellow. Okay. And next up we have, actually I'm going to turn this, it's a bit easier for me to paint it this way. Next up we have Rose Red by Turner, which is PV19. And as I said, PV19 can be, oops, wrong one. As I said, PV19 can be a range of different hues. This one's a lovely sort of rosy colour. And so this is, in other brands, this particular shade would be known as quinacridone rose. And PV19 is a quinacridone pigment. So typically colours that use PV19 will have quinacridone in the name. And next up we have Rose Matter Hue. And this is sort of a alizarin crimson type colour. It's not the original alizarin crimson, because the original alizarin crimson is pigment PR83, which is a very fugitive colour, which means it fades over time, and quite quickly too, from what I've heard. And this is a more light fast version. This is more of a red red it's slightly more cool leaning but it's not as pink as the rose red then next up we have another non-turner watercolor we have daniel smith naphthamide maroon and i love the rich deep colors you can get with this it's a lovely sort of wine sort of color like wine like red wine made with PR171, a bit too much water there, um, and it's a lovely transparent colour as well. Next up we have a very popular colour by Daniel Smith, Moon Glow, and this one has some mixed reviews about whether or not it's light fast, there's a lot of debate about that, but I really like it, and so far I've not had any issues. I do plan on doing some light fast tests on some of my watercolours. To see how they hold up and I'll definitely share the results of that with you when I get round to doing it and this is a three pigment blend moon glow it's PB29 which is ultramarine blue it's PR177 which is anthraquinoid red and PG18 which is a true viridian 
it's a lovely sort of dark purpley colour and it um, sometimes it can separate into its various um, colours like you see the blues and the reds come out and it's really beautiful. Okay next up we have Maya Blue by Turner. This is a signal pigment colour PB82. So in all these pigment numbers the P stands for pigment and the letter that comes after it denotes which colour family it's in. So PB is pigment blue, PO pigment orange, PR pigment red, etc. PG is pigment green, PV is pigment violet. And how you can tell what pigments, what colours they represent. This is a lovely blue, my blue. It reminds me a lot of the Daniel Smith Mine Blue Genuine, but it has the same pigment as Daniel Smith's Mine Dark Blue. So, beautiful colour. Next up we have Jackson, Jackson's Art, their own brand Ultramarine Blue, which is PB29. It's a very standard pigment, it's a good mixing colour, useful. In a lot of situations. It's granulating as well. Next up we have Lucas's turquoise. Now this is more of like a phthalo turquoise. It's the original single single pigment phthalo turquoise pigment which is PB16. It's a really lovely rich colour and again it's a really good mixer. It's some lovely vibrant greens mixing this with the yellows. Okay so next up we have the Turner turquoise blue. But this is more, like I've said, I think I said in the setup video, that this is more like a cobalt teal colour. And it's a true cobalt pigment, it's a PB28, and it's a beautiful colour. And again, it's also a granulating colour, so it can create some lovely effects when you mix it with other colours. It's slightly more opaque, it's a semi-opaque colour but I really love it. Then we have Turner's Olive Green and this again is a multi-pigment colour. It's got three pigments in it. This is PG7 which is a phthalo green mixed with PY110 and PR101 which is that earth red pigment. It's got a green yellow and a red making up this olive green colour which is beautiful. I love a good olive green. I know it's a it's a convenience mix. I could easily mix an olive green by mixing a bit of a red pigment in with a sap green. But I love having this colour on my palette because I use it so much. So it's a great it's great to have something like this as a base colour to work from. I, and I don't always use it straight out of the pan, but I can. It's quite a natural looking green, which I really like. Uh, but I also mix it with blues and yellows to kind of change the tone a little bit as well. So next up we have Sap Green by Turner. This is a two pigment blend of Sap Green. It's PG36 and PY110. So PG7, which we had in the olive green, is known as Thalo Green Blue Shade. So it's a more blue leaning green pigment. And PG36 is Thalo Green Yellow Shade. So as the name would suggest, it's a more yellow leaning green pigment. And on their own, both PG36 and PG7 are quite harsh colours. They're not very natural looking, but they create some really beautiful greens when mixed with other colours. And again, Sap Green is another favourite of mine. I pretty much always have an olive green and a sap green on on any palette. Okay, then the next green we have is Evergreen by Turner. This is a three pigment blend as well. This is PY42, which is a yellow ochre color, PB15, which is a phthalo blue color, and PR101, so again, that earthy red color. This one's a pretty opaque color as well. And I really, I don't think I really realised how opaque this colour was when I purchased it because this was one I bought a while ago before when I was just wanted to try out 
a shade from Turner and it wasn't the best one to select because like I said it is pretty opaque so I've not really used it a huge amount but it will be interesting to play around with it and see what we can do. Then next up we have Burnt Sienna which is PBR7 which is a pretty standard pigment for, P uh, for Burnt Sienna. PBR7 is used for actually several different colours. It's used for Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, um, burnt umber and raw umber all those colors use various um, variations on PBR7 so again like PR101 and PV19 PBR7 can be used to create a variety of different shades of brown in some brands it's a granulating color in others it's less so but I think this one is ever so slightly granulating Okay, and then finally we have Mars Black, which is PBK11. And if I'm going to have a black on my palette, this will be the one that I will pick because it's quite an interesting black. It's a granulating one and it will create some really lovely mixes, granulating mixes and interesting darks as a result. And it's not like a really, really like a jet black. It's a little bit lighter. It's more of a grey. And the granulation really shows up when you use a lot of water with this colour. Okay, so that's our palette of colours. Show you up close a little bit so you can see all the colours nicely. And yeah, really love how this palette has come together. I think it's going to be really fun to play with. And I will definitely be back to do a little painting with this in a separate video. I was going to do it in this video, but I think this one's going to be long enough on its own just doing the swatching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the pigment chat. I wasn't expecting to go on about that as much as I did, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I will be back again soon with another video. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you soon. Bye.